Hello, welcome back to the channel. Now in this video, we're going to be looking into maps. So if you want to add a map to your website in 2020, this is gonna be hopefully giving you an overview of the different sort of options available to you right now. So the main option, and um, probably the leading option for the last five, 10 years has been Google Maps. Now there, they are definitely one of the biggest map providers you can use. They have um, different styles of maps so you can add them quickly to your site. But we'll also look at a, an alternative to Google Maps called Mapbox, which is used by um, Facebook and Snapchat and sort of lots of different apps. You can see down here, um, they have a lot of different sites that are using them. Um, with Google Maps, they are probably still the most used. Big name users of them would be sites like Airbnb and lots of smaller sites as well who use their um, basic map options. But in this video, we'll look into these two options here and how you can actually get started with creating your account, getting your API keys and adding them onto your site. So in terms of pricing, Google Maps actually changed the way their pricing is structured around a year or so ago, which means they're no longer the sort of leading clear option. It depends really on what you need to use it for. So to embed a basic map onto your site um, with the iframe example that we'll show, that's now completely free. Um, we'll show you how to do that. But if you need to customize your maps, add a bit more styling, change the coloring of the, um, the parts of the map, you need to use the JavaScript API down here. Now this is uh, $7 per every 1,000 requests. So if you've got say you know, 50,000 requests, this quickly adds up, even with the um, $200 a month um, free limit they give you. It depends what you need. Now the alternative that we're looking at in this video is called Mapbox. Now the comparison um, in their pricing would be this map loads for the web, which gives you 50,000 free um, requests per month, um, which is quite good. And then above that, each um, each 1,000 costs you $5. So that's a saving of $2 there. But their prices get cheaper the more um, calls you make. But again, that does add up the more loads that you have. So it depends exactly what you need, but with these options, they both allow you to use their styling. So for example, Google Maps, you can change the design here um, to fit the sort of style of your site. And the same thing again with Mapbox, you can customize it as much as you want. And there's sort of really detailed options there as well. So in the next part of this video, we'll start to look at how you can first get started with each of these options and how you can use both the embed API if you just want to add a simple map to your website and then looking at more custom options with the JavaScript API for both Google Maps and Mapbox. To create your API key, you need to first go to the Google Cloud platform and either create a new project like this or use an existing project that you have. So if you're creating a new one, just click create. This will then load up your project page and then go to the top where you can search for products and resources and type in maps and then you can click onto the Maps API, Embed API. And we can also use the JavaScript API, which we'll be looking at next. But first click on Maps Embed API, and then click on Enable. This will then load and set up the, um, this service for your account. It might take a minute or two to load. And then once this is done, we need to add a um, API key for this account. So as you can see, this is the um, page that it takes you to, then you need to click on to credentials. And when you're on the credentials page, it will explain that you need to first create a API key. So if you haven't made any API keys yet, you'll need to go to a separate page called credential APIs and services, and then click on the create credentials button at the top of the page. And then you want to select API key so that you can actually use this in your projects. This will then give you a key that you can use straight away um, in your map for your maps. Then we need to click on restrict key so it can only be used by us. So we can first set a, a number of different ways we can restrict this. So the first one and the best option to use is an HTTP referrer. So in other words, the domain name that it can be used in. So you need to make sure that it's both HTTP and HTTPS. So you can use the star key just there as a wildcard. Then you type in your domain name and then use a wildcard again at the end. But for now, I'm going to remove this just so I can use it on a code pen for an example. You can also restrict your API key by the types of APIs it's allowed to use. So for example, if we restrict this just by the maps embed type that we've got, so we just search for maps and we can just click on embeds API. 
And we'll also do this for the JavaScript API as well in a moment. But for now, we'll just click Save. And that is our API key ready and set up for us to use for the maps embed type. And you can copy it to your clipboard from there as well. So next, we need to go and set up the Maps JavaScript API as well. So you can do that just by searching for Maps or JavaScript at the top here, and then click onto it, and it will then load. So again, we need to enable this service for our account. So click on Enable, and it will take a moment to load again. Then we need to go through exactly the same process to enable, um, to add this to our API key. So if we go to Credentials, we will see that there's not any API keys set up yet, just there. But if we go to the credentials and API key services, we can do this. Or if we go straight to our Maps Embed API page, we can add it to our same API key rather than creating multiple um, API keys. So we go back to credentials again for our Embed Maps API. And then we can just click on to our same API key and then scroll down to where we restricted it and also tick the JavaScript API. So if we click Save Now, this is all ready for us to use for both the Maps Embed API and the Maps JavaScript API. So once you've done this, you're all set up and ready to use. Now that we have our API key set up, we can start to actually take a look at the Maps in action. So to do this, we need to go back to the developer guide over here and we're going to start by taking a look at this first introduction um, part of the guide where we can use this iframe version of the Google Maps API. So if we copy this part of the code just here, um, so here is the iframe code just here. And if we go back to the console and just copy our API key and then paste that in just here, we should see the maps appear. Okay, so there's the map. And then you can adjust everything from here as you would with a normal um, CSS a normal HTML element, so you can use CSS like this, you can say like width 100%, and that will then span the width of the page. And because we're using the, um, the iframe part of the code here, we don't have to use longitude and latitude as you would with the JavaScript API. So we can just type in anything here. So if we wanted to say London Eye, for example, it can find locations on the map like this as well. So it's a nice, easy way of using it, and this, is the free version that lets you have loads of um, calls each month. So if you want a quick way to add a map to your website, this is probably still the best option. But if you want to be able to customize it more, we need to look at the JavaScript API. So if you need to customize things a little more, then the JavaScript API for Google Maps could be better suited to you. Now to get started with this, it's a similar format to what we had before, but we need to make a few adjustments. So we've now taken our map element and because we're not using an iframe anymore, we've created a separate map element just here and we've set a height and a width. We then have our call here to Google Maps further down the page. Now, as you can see, we need to add in our API key again. But the important thing you need to look for here is this callback um, attribute in the, or parameter in the URL. This is set to the init map function just here. So this means once this script is loaded, it's gonna make a call to this function. So here's our function just here, which sets the map variable. And we're just making sure that we call our actual map. So here I'm using an ID, but you could use a class name if you wanted. Now the main difference, what you'll see so far is before we were using an address. So this could be any type of address that you use around the world. But for this API, you need to make sure that you're using a latitude and a longitude value for your location. So I've used the same um, address as we had before of the London Eye, but I've actually gone and found the latitude and longitude for this. A useful site that can you can use to find this is latlong.net. So you just type in the place name or you can actually press on the map where you want it to be and it will give you the um, latitude and longitude for this address. But if you're going to be changing your locations on the fly, then you can use the geocoding API from Google, but this does incur extra API costs um, per usage. So it depends which way you wanna go. But to show you what this looks like, again, we'll copy the same API key because we allowed it to be used for both types and we'll paste it in just here. And there we have it. You can see that this is loaded now, but what you might notice is at the moment, there is not a marker shown. It's just centered 
um, in this location. To add a marker, you just add a piece of script like this. So we set our marker here, so um, of a new variable, and it's the same as we did up here. So it's Google Maps marker, and then you set a position. Now this just takes an object of your latitude and longitude. So if you wanted, we could just set this once. So for example, we could say map point or any name just here. And then we can replace our two objects here with this variable. So it keeps it all consistent. So as you can see, this is all using the same variable. So there's our marker. And then this just sets the um, type of map that you're using. So if you have multiple maps on your page, this would make sure that you're adding your marker to the correct map. Now, the other benefit of using the JavaScript API is that you can style your map. So if you go to mapstyle.withgoogle.com, you can see a selection of different styles. Now, we're going to just use one of the um, default themes just here, but you can customize these um, in a number of different ways. Then when you're ready to use it, you just click Finish, and it will give you all of the code that you need to start using um, this map uh, this style in your map. So if we copy this and add it to our page, we'll just call it map style. So we've pasted this onto the page and we've put our map style variable just here. And then down here where we're setting up our map, so down here just after zoom, we'll say styles and then pass in the variable to our styles um, object just here. And you should now see that you have your style set as we just mentioned. So if we go and change this to something else, copy the JSON again, go back, and then make sure we select it from here and paste. This will update with the new style. So that is one of the benefits of using the JavaScript API. You can adjust things much more. And again, on this marker, we could adapt the actual image that's shown. So again, so you can, you can customize this by just putting in an icon and then the URL to your image. So if we just wait for this to load, we can see we have this customized icon here. Now, obviously you wanna make sure that you have the correct size um, of this. This is a little large, um, but you can see how quickly you can customize your map to fit the design that you want. But yeah, so this is the JavaScript API with Google Maps. Now, there are a number of other features as well you can use, but again, if you take a look at the docs, you can find out more information. But this gives you a quick example of how you can use the JavaScript API to customize your maps, add custom markers, style it in different ways, and quickly add this to your page. But the big thing, as we mentioned before, is the prices of these API calls are quite a lot compared to um, just using the normal um, iframe embed. However, as we mentioned, we're also going to be looking at Mapbox as an alternative. So first, let's create an account. We can go ahead and use the default um, access token that we've been created to add a map box to our page. Now you can do this by clicking on the web uh, link just here, and then you can choose between either using the map box CDN or if you're using um, Node, you can use the NPM module bundler um, instead, but for this example, we'll use the CDN. This then gives you the JavaScript and CSS files you need to copy and an example um, map script that we can use. So I've copied this so far and added it to our code pen with a couple of small changes. Now, similar to what we did with Google Maps, you can enter a center item just here, which uses longitude and latitude. Now, the important thing to note on here as well is that these are the other way around as they were with Google Maps. They had latitude and longitude, whereas Mapbox uses longitude and latitude. You wanna watch out for that. And then as well, we have, we have the zoom option just here. Now, the thing that makes Mapbox quite interesting is this style parameter just here. Now, you can see at the moment, this is the default um, styling option. If we go back to the Mapbox dashboard just here, we can actually add our own styles. So if we um, just finish this part just here and scroll down and go to the studio link, so Mapbox Studio, and click Get Started, this allows us to create our own styles we can use for the map. So if we click New Style just here, we can choose from any of these um, starting points and you can see what they look like just by clicking onto them. So if we start with this one, we'll just customize it a little bit. For example, we can change um, the, the colors that, that water is, just like this, like that you can see. And you can go through and change all of the different types that you want. But for this example, we're just gonna keep it like this. And again, they have um, documentation and help that you can uh, see over in the corner here if you have a particular style in mind, but for now we're just going to skip this. And if we click, if we click publish up here, 
it lets you see the changes that you've actually made. But if we publish this as a new style and then click share, we can see our URL down here. So if we copy this and go back to our code pen and just change the style that we have here, and this will then update the style that we're using with our new style that we just created. So you can see there, there's the updated style with the uh, blue color for the rivers. So you can see how easy uh, Mapbox is to get started with, but there are the similar issues that we had with Google Maps where you have to get your longitude and latitude. So you need to make sure that you have an extra way of getting the actual longitude and latitude values from an address or a place that you want to use on your maps. And just one last thing on Mapbox as well, you can add markers um, to these maps. So you can see it's very similar again to Google Maps. You just set a marker um, variable just here and set it to new Mapbox GL, similar to up here, and just set this as marker. And then you just have to set the longitude and latitude of your marker, so the location on the map you want it to be, and then just add it to your map. And just make sure this is the same variable as up here. So if I change this to map one, um, like that, that'll make sure that it's still added to the same map. So that is how you can use Mapbox. If you want to have a look at any more specifics, you can find all of this information in the Mapbox docs. So they have more information on markers. Um, you can find examples, um, different properties and options you can use and um, further like interactions and click events that you can have on your maps. So when you compare both Google Maps and Mapbox, now that you've seen how you can get started and using them in this video, they are quite similar, but it depends on the exact use case that you have in mind. And again, with pricing as well, Mapbox is slightly, um, slightly on the cheaper side, but again, if you have lots of um, usage, this goes, does go up quickly. Um, but if you want a simple map that you can add to your site, I'd definitely recommend using the, um, the embed um, iframe uh, option from Google Maps. But if you want to customize it a bit more, I would definitely recommend Mapbox as a more affordable option there with just as much features as Google and it's slightly easier um, to style and get the look that you want that fits your site. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. And if you want to find more videos like this in the future, feel free to subscribe to the channel.